Sri Lanka in flames. This is how the crisis unfolded. March the 31st. This is when the crisis truly begins, when hundreds of protesters tried to storm the home of the Lankan president Gotabaya Rajapaksa, demanding his resignation. April the 1st, as the protests spread over the crippling economic crisis, Gotabaya declares a state of emergency, giving security forces sweeping powers to arrest and detain miscreants. April the 3rd, almost all of Sri Lanka's cabinet resigns, leaving President Gotabaya and his brother Mahinda, the then Prime Minister, isolated. April the 4th, Gotabaya's peace offer to the opposition is rebuffed. The President had offered to share power with the opposition under a unity administration led by then Prime Minister Mahinda. April the 5th, but this was just the beginning of the president's problems. The embattled leader lost his parliamentary majority as former allies urged him to quit. He lifted the state of emergency after seven days in Sri Lanka. April the 9th, tens of thousands of protesters marched against the beleaguered president, reiterating their demand for his resignation. The biggest protest to date. April the 12th, Sri Lanka announced it is defaulting on its entire external debt of 51 billion US dollars. The island nation had earlier run out of foreign exchange to import desperately needed everyday goods. April the 18th, the president unveiled a new cabinet, ousting two of his brothers and a nephew, but clinging on to his eldest brother Mahinda as prime minister. April the 19th, the police kill one protester, the first casualty after several weeks of anti-government protests. April the 28th, a general strike brings the crippled country to a total standstill. May the 6th, thousands of shops, schools and businesses close as public and private sector workers go on strike. Gotabaya declares emergency for the second time in over a month. May the 9th, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa resigns to make way for a unity government. But things spiral out of control. At least five people are killed in clashes in Colombo, including a ruling party member of parliament. Authorities announce a nationwide curfew once again.